Hello everybody, my name is Matt and I wanted to share a project or a couple projects that I've been trying to work with that are loosely based around Minecraft and the real world. So specifically there's a sculpture here that you see on screen that I wanted to try to bring into Minecraft as a piece of geometry that could be explored. So to start with, um, I had to find the geometry I wanted, which is, as I said, this sculpture. The piece is actually entitled Bather. It's by a sculptor named Jacques, Jacques Lipschitz. Um, it was done in between 1923 and 1925. If you Google it, you'll find all sorts of information about him, him, his work, and this piece. So in terms of what I started to do, once I, had, once I knew that I wanted to do this, I generated, I went around and took a bunch of photographs of it, as you see here. Um, just basically stepped a couple feet to the little, to the left and took a picture and took a picture and took a picture. Uh, ended up with about 30 or 40 images, um, all from about this height, um, but going all the way around. And uploaded them into a free program that I've started using called 123D Catch from Autodesk. Um, like I said, it's a free program. You upload the photographs that you take to their servers. They parse them and process them and they give you back a 3D model of what they think your object looks like. So here's here you see in the 123D catch application what they've been able to reconstruct and the kind of nice thing is that as long as you get all the sides of the object in your photographs you can then start to move the camera to places that you didn't actually take the photograph from so you can see you know what this what the object looks like from straight up from straight up or you can get real close um, and because it's Autodesk they and they do a lot of uh, CAD architecture kind of work, architecture and engineering kind of work they have made this uh, this program really interoperable which is a difference from something like Photosynth which you can also upload images to and get a 3D representation back but it's not meant to it doesn't really do a whole lot to then do exports so here with within the 123d catch interface i can set, choose to export capture as an obj file that obj file is important because that's a very common interchange format for 3d modeling so you can take the obj and get it into i believe there's plugins you can get it into sketchup with you can take it to blender you can take it to all sorts of other programs um, but with obj um, you can also get textures if where your header supports textures in this case or not but um, i can process take this object process it dump it to an obj file and um, then there's a program called binvox which will take an obj file and translate that into voxel formats so um, and the command looks a little bit like this where you would say you know go to a command line run binvox you can tell it to rotate the object 90 degrees in x or z dimensions and you can chain them to get different rotations you can set a dimension here or in this case i've set you know 30 voxels from top to bottom and dump dump you know tell it what file what file format i want which if i then say i want to run the parallel command view box then i get um a voxelized version of this geometry which is i think really kind of cool and given the um command options that you see here i can say show me a single line it shows me what height and it shows me what the object looks like at that height i can choose to colorize these things um, i can even choose to um, choose i can i can move up and down and you know move and with this i can actually get the opportunity to build this object block you know block by block or brick by brick in minecraft so if i go into um, the server that i play with um you'll see that uh that's ex that's actually exactly what i did um hello server please respond there we go uh, i've got a load running 14 million programs on my laptop at the same time so if i walk over here you can see there it is um uh, i had a ton of cobblestone as you get with some of these some of these worlds and um i built the object it's about 30 bricks tall um figured since it was called bay there i'd have them i'd build it in the water but um it's really kind of that simple um the build process in this case took about 20 to 30 minutes um to you know run around and build each layer 
build each layer up one by one and the in, in this case I, I chose cobblestone because that's what I had lots of I'd probably like to go back through and make it out of brick or netherrack or something but um, that's basically what I've been trying to do and in this case because the geometry is uh, where's my geometry here um, there's a lot of subtlety in this in this object that doesn't necessarily translate to 30 voxels. Um, I'm actually in the process of building a much larger version up here on the hill. Um, this is layers, probably the, the bottom fifth of it or the bottom quarter of it is what you see up there on the screen. So um, you'll see that you see this underhang here, it's, which is this part of it starting to show up um, right there. So you can imagine how much how tall this thing is going to be by the time I get to it. We're looking at, you know, it's going to be up to way up there or somewhere, which is going to be just awesome to see. But yeah, so this is the one of the fun things that I've been playing with. Um, hopefully, you found it interesting um, and can use some of the programs in the work that you're doing. And if you like it, let me know. If you don't, uh, hey, let me know that too. That's fine. Um, but thanks for watching. Bye.